My name is Nicholas Johnson, and I have shot photos professionally for IMSA and Champ Car at tracks all over the US. Daytona, Coda, Sebring, Indy, Road America, the whole circuit. I even got to walk the track at Miami F1 while they were laying the pavement. This video is about the shooting locations, the tricks, the camera settings that I use to get the best shots of race cars when shooting at a motorsports event. Number one, before you even pick up a camera, the single best way you can step up the quality of the shots that you can get of a race car at a track is by gaining full access to that track. When you shoot from the stands or from publicly available places around the event, you really miss out on some of the most visceral moments of the race. The driver change, the shots of the crews doing crew stuff, being up close and personal with the S's, or the shots of the finish line with the stands in the background from the perspective of the crew. In order to get a lot of these shots, you've got to be standing where the general public generally isn't allowed to be. At amateur races like Champ Car, this is a lot easier to do. There will be media contact info on the website for whatever event you want to go to, and even if you know one of the teams there, contact the event organizer and ask if you can attend as media. This will get you a vest, which serves as your golden ticket down into the pits, through all the gates, over to the ends of the straightaways, and lining up along those S's where all the fun tends to happen. Number two, let's talk about camera settings. In case you're coming from a place of limited knowledge about your DSLR or mirrorless camera, or maybe you've really honed your skills taking portraits or pictures at weddings, but you don't have any idea what makes a really good fast looking race car picture. Here are the basics and the reasons behind the few types of pictures that I like to take for the teams that hire me at these events. Let's start with your fast panning zoom by shot. This is most often the shot that will end up framed and mounted behind the guy's desk at the wall of his mechanics shop. We want these pictures to look fast. One of the good things about the panning shot is that historically they don't necessarily have to be in perfect focus because a long time ago with film and manual everything that was just super hard to do. So the standards have been set. And even with a super modern camera that can lock onto objects in 3D space, it can still be pretty challenging to do without some practice. But when you nail it, the zoom by makes an exceptional photo. For the fast panning shots, you're gonna be prioritizing your shutter speed over everything else. I shoot manual for everything, and with a mirrorless camera, that's pretty easy to set up, because you can see what the exposure will look like before you take any pictures. With the DSLR, it takes a little more trial and error. The specific shutter speed that you're gonna choose will depend on how fast the car is driving for the effect that you're trying to go for. If you're shooting prototype IMSA cars and they're hitting 200 miles an hour on the back straight of Daytona, you can still make them look pretty fast at a shutter speed of one over 150 or even one over 200. But on the other extreme of the speed speed, Spectrum. If you're trying to make a tuk-tuk that's only going 30 miles per hour outside your hotel room on vacation in Cambodia look fast, like I was trying to do just a week ago, then you gotta drop your shutter speed all the way down to 1 over 30. And if you're careful enough with the pan and get it just right, bam, speedy motor scooter. What you're trying to do here is to keep the vehicle in perfect focus by matching the speed that they go by with the pan of your camera, while leaving your shutter open long enough that the background will blur in the direction of travel of said vehicle. A slow shutter will also make the rims of the car go blurry, which helps drive home the feeling of speed. But when you're shooting in daylight and you slow the shutter speed way down, you're gonna end up with a super overexposed shot. So you'll be closing down your aperture and setting your ISO to baseline to compensate. Normally, shooting with a closed down aperture, something like F18 or F22 would make everything in the picture be in focus, which is not what we're going for since we want the focus of the viewer to be on the car. But because of the motion and the slow shutter and the fact that you're gonna be matching the motion of the car with your pan but not the motion of the background, the background will go blurry and the car will be sharp. I can't just give a number that works across the board because this depends completely on the camera sensor, how sunny or cloudy or shady or just generally bright the place that you're standing is. So let's say start with a shutter speed of 1 over 80, start with your ISO at 100 and then just adjust your aperture until your exposure looks right. Next, put your camera into burst mode high so that when you hold down the shutter it just rattles off pictures over and over. This is because you will not nail the focus on most of the shots when you're doing this pan. You don't want to. The car is gonna be driving very fast, presumably, and you have to perfectly match that speed inside your viewfinder such that for the duration that your shutter is open, in this instance, 1 80th of a second, the car has to remain exactly in the same place in the frame. And when you take a burst of five or 10 photos, the likelihood of one of them having matched the speed perfectly is a lot higher. And if it turns out you've got a knack for this motion and you are nailing like half the shots, well then keep cranking that shutter speed lower, one over 60, one over 30, until you get about one in 10 shots, because the slower the shot the faster the picture. Also, a little pro tip, if you really like the composition on a particular photo, but you missed the focus or just completely blew out the exposure, just make your picture black and white and keep it. For whatever reason, in my opinion, that compensates with enough extra awesome to save the shot. If you're using a modern mirrorless camera, set your focal point to single point tracking spot. It's called something different in all the cameras, I'm sure. That takes one additional thing off your plate while this is all happening. With this a7 IV, for instance, you can put the little square on the car as it drives by, press the shutter halfway down, and it's just gonna keep the car in focus as long as it stays in the frame. You trying to get out of here? Sorry, 
the dog needs to leave. Also, if you're using a long telephoto, oftentimes there will be multiple settings for the stabilization. And usually, I think maybe even always, there's a one and a two, and the two is specifically made for panning. So it'll stabilize the up and down motion, but leave the side to side motion up to you. That'll make the blur lines really straight. A lot of photographers will use a monopod also for these kind of panning shots, which will keep the camera on the same Y axis and you're only dealing with the pan. Not me though, I tend to keep it handheld. I'm already carrying too much extra crap when I'm walking around the course. Next shot, head on, coming down the straightaway in the chase. Things I want to accomplish for these shots are a super in focus lead car with the chase cars and the rest of the background a little blurred out. For these, I use a really long lens. I use this at 600 millimeters, which can make it so that a whole half mile straightaway full of cars can all appear here in the same shot. And I like seeing all the heat distortion from the road. When you focus out to a super long distance, you can see all the heat rising up on the road behind the cars. And I like to be at the level of the hood of the car, sometimes even below it if I can. It makes it look really mean. Ideally, I'm looking for a circumstance where my target car is being chased down by a bunch of other cars. I want that same effect as with the panning shot where the car is in focus and pretty much everything else is slightly out of focus. But for this shot, I'm using a completely different method to get there. For the straight on shots, I want a fast shutter speed and a wide open aperture, the lowest F number that your lens will allow. So set your camera's shutter speed as fast as you can go with the amount of light that you've got, and then as low of an F stop number that your lens will allow. This one is F 2.8. This one is only a 5.6. So shutter speed of one over 2000 or maybe one over 4000 if I'm shooting at 200 millimeters f2.8. And with the Sigma 150 to 600, unfortunately I'm limited to a smaller f5.6 aperture, but I'd rather the pictures be a little grainy and keep the sharpness. So I'll pump up the ISO and keep my shutter speed fast. I hope all that made sense. We're relying on the relatively narrow plane of focus from a wide open aperture rather than motion blur to get the blur on these shots. And luckily, because of the somewhat confusing physics of very long lenses, even at f6.3, if you're shooting at 600 millimeters, only the lead car will be in focus, allowing for some of these chase shots that in my opinion just look so cool. We're using the fast shutter speed for sharpness and because you can't see the wheels of the race car, even though you're completely freezing time, it'll still look fast because of the heat ripples and the mean angle combined with the fact that he's being chased down by a bunch of other cars. It's kind of odd, but a photo looking fast is more psychological than anything. For instance, when you use a fast shutter from the side, I mean, this looks like the car is actually just parked on the straightaway. Nothing about this looks like a speeding race car, but this one totally does. That's because fast things in your normal vision through your eyes have a blur. My hand has a blur. So it's all just a trick. My Cambodian tuk-tuks weren't speedy at all, but I think these things look pretty fun. Fast. Also, as an addendum to number two, most of the time at the end of a straightaway or near the S's of any course, there's gonna be some safety fence that you have to be on the wrong side of. But fun fact, for photographers, unlike normie race fans, fences don't actually exist. They're completely invisible to your camera at certain settings. This is another circumstance for using a wide open aperture. If you stop down your lens to whatever F11 or F20, look at this, nothing but fence. The cars are behind there, but it's too distracting to find them. However, when you crank open your aperture setting as wide as it goes, check this out, the fence at Daytona in turn three of the International Horseshoe just magically fades out of existence. And you can use Sony's masterful autofocus to nail whatever car is coming around that bend as if the fence was never there. There's gonna be a photo hole in the fence every so often, but there's also gonna be a bunch of other photographers camping out at them. And finally, the most important images that I like to deliver a team are in the garage, pit, and paddock. This is where you get to search for some emotion, some camaraderie, some sadness, some anger. You're looking for things happening that add to the overall story of the weekend. And of course, pitting itself. With your golden ticket, your photo vest, you'll typically be allowed not only into the pits with the teams, but, and especially with amateur races, onto the hot side of the pit road itself. A few things to note that should be obvious, but it turns out a lot of people are really stupid. And a camera's viewfinder does this really weird thing where you feel totally removed from your actual surroundings. It feels like you're watching a movie of what's happening. Except in a movie, you can't get run over, and at Sebring International Raceway, you absolutely can, and pretty easily. These people in these cars are in a hurry. Gentlemen drivers, arriving drivers are sometimes kind of new at driving or just bad at it. And when you're strapped into a car that you're unfamiliar with, you're wearing a helmet and it's connected to one of those Hans devices that's locked into the seat behind you so that your neck doesn't break should you crash the car, what you're left with as a driver is mostly blind spots. I actually was a driver before I was a photographer. Check out that long hair. And these guys are not thinking about the cameraman. Your vest will only save you from the officials, not the cars themselves. So be extremely aware of your surroundings. When you're on the hot side of the pit, you are 
always in danger. For these photos, I'm looking for anything race related or storyline related that might be happening in or around the pits. I shoot mostly endurance races, so really long 10 hour to 24 hour long races. There are multiple driver changes, fuel stops, tire changes, things going wrong with the car and people getting heated. For composition, I'm on pit road with this 70 to 200 F2.8 at 2.8. If you don't know your camera that well, for these shots, just use aperture priority mode, the little A, or I think on Canon cameras, the little AV, and set your aperture to be wide open. Let the camera do everything else. That means the lowest f-stop number that your lens allows. I like to shoot close-up pictures from far away so I can hone in on just the driver getting out of the car or just the guy jacking up the side of the car for a tire change or a team pushing a car that overshot their stall. If the team manager is going to come over the wall to yell at the driver, I'm there to grab it. Those shots always end up being keepers. And then also the drivers themselves. With the longer lens, I don't have to be stuffing my camera all the way like into the car to get a dramatic shot of their eyes before they get out there and drive. And I will always talk to the pit stalls to either side of the one I'm shooting for, they'll know if their driver's planning to come in at the same time my driver's planning to come in, and they can scream at me to get out of the way if something unexpected happens and their car rolls in unannounced. But don't forget about the people, these shots are not just about the cars. Also bring snacks, you're gonna walk a lot, and if you got a truck, bring a bicycle, it really helps to get around the track. 